greensandmachines.com. I mentioned that I wanted to upgrade this no weld bicycle trailer. If you watched all the way to the end of the hauling grain in the rain video, I voiced my complaints about how thin this tubing was. So I'm going to build a new frame for this trailer out of some old server rack rails and some scrap steel I found in the street. The trailer is basically going to be the same except for this middle rectangular part. I'm reusing the rest of the parts, except this time they'll be attached on a lot more securely. I'm also going to add those fenders that I never got around to. Here's that scrap steel I'll be working with. I don't know what this was, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's a really large umbrella stand with these extra long legs for anchoring into the grass or something. The first step was to drill out the rivets holding them together. These yielded four long pieces, which I then hacksawed to the lengths I needed. I then deburred the ends and drilled mounting holes with a 732nd drill bit. This will be clearance for 1032 screws. I then deburred the holes with a chamfer tool. Here I am test fitting the pieces and squaring up the frame so I could mark the hole locations for the diagonal pieces. I decided to go with an X-frame design, like they use for making truck chassis. The server rails proved quite ideal for this application because I could bolt the slats on the top and the cross pieces on the bottom. To ensure rigid positioning of the wheel dropouts, I decided to mill shallow key slots into the server rails. This is kind of overkill considering the dropouts attach with countersunk screws threaded directly into the rails, but I wanted an extra layer of security. I didn't want the dropouts going all over the place like last time. I did the same where the linkage hardware attaches too. So not wanting history to repeat itself like on the original trailer frame, I'm going to put a bunch of spacers in between the tubing so it doesn't crush when I bolt it on. I know this is kind of overkill, but I'm just not wanting to leave any stones unturned on this renovation. So I've got a machining set up in the lathe. Come on, fire department. I got this set up in the lathe with the tail stock with the drill chuck as a stop. So I just dial it in to where it says zero, lock this. Loosen the chuck, pull it out until it touches the stop, tighten it again. Loosen the tailstock, back this up, and start machining. And if I get cooling on the camera, oh well. Just keep repeating that 20 more times. So I was wondering how am I going to deburr all these, it's going to be a nightmare. So I figured clamp it in a chuck, get this, use the dikes to get this burr off, like that. Then come in either with chamfer tool. And I already filed them in the lathe, so that's already smooth. So that's saving a lot of time. See, look at all the trouble you've got to go through to make a decent no weld bike trailer. Just get yourself a welder. Don't even, don't even attempt making a bike trailer without a welder. That's my advice. I'm just kidding. This is just overkill. But I will say it does feel good to have a large quantity of machined items in my hand that are very close in size to each other. I was able to get it pretty consistently at the length of 0.390, which is what I was looking for. So let's go put this thing together. So here's the original trailer frame from the previous video. The reason I milled those slots was because I saw these things coming loose, going all over the place because this thing would start rotating right there and I do not want that same with over here these would start to 
go like that. So I'm going to make a really redundant amount of fastening onto the new frame. I'm going to tap the holes in the server rails and it's going to be keyed in and it's going to have a lock nut on the other end. So there's no way this thing's coming apart. It's the best you can do without welding it. I went ahead and filed this one a little more deep just to make it match the other one. But here are the parts and it appears that they only kind of key in there. I milled it a bit oversized. That one fits them better. These ones fit alright too. Not nearly as much movement as before they existed. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I went ahead and marked the locations for the holes, so I'm going to drill and tap those right now. So I got the dropout screwed in, but upon a second look, I'm actually very glad I tapped those holes because for those two next to the web right there, there's no way I could fit a lock nut on there. So I'm going to put a lock nut on the further one down, but the other two will just have to put thread locking on it. Oh my gosh, that would have been terrible. I would have had to either like mill that out or do something weird but as to that I'm going to demonstrate now a fast way to get that nut all the way down a lot faster than going with the wrench over and over. Adding to the complication of me trying to use the original holes that were in this piece, they were punched through with some kind of punch, leaving the remnant slug from the hole just dangling inside there, which normally wouldn't be a problem, but since I'm trying to stuff these spacer thingies in there, that's going to get in the way, so I'm going to have to find out how to get those out. Well, it's actually ended up being a little bit easier than I thought. At first I was going to stick a screwdriver in there, but it was too big. So I just grabbed one of my files with the tang that doesn't have the handle on it. And stuck it through here. And just bend that little flap back and forth until it falls off. Bend it this way, bend it back. And there it goes. There's the slug. And then I'll just clean that up with a file so I can fit my spacer in. Alright, now that my spacers fit in every single tube, it's time to build. Alright, so here I've got all the top slats screwed on. And since I've put my spacers in now, I can really tighten those down as much as I want and not worry about crushing the tubing. Now I'm just putting lock nuts on all these. And I'm glad I vouched for lock nuts because, as it turned out, more than half of the server rack screws were stripped. So I got the pieces for the fenders. I'm going to go ahead and bend them at 90 degrees right here. And then bend the rest of it by hand. These don't need to be super precise because I can always bend it some more if I need to. And I made it so the ugly part with all the printing and stuff is going on the bottom so no one will see it. So I'll test fit them on the trailer. So just give it some of this kind of action.
Should have gone way less than 90 degrees though. I'm gonna bend these back some more. Mark where I need to drill the second hole. So there it is, with the fenders and all. I thought I was going to be hating this mismatched color scheme with the black and the beige. I thought this was going to make it look like old electronics, but it actually kind of, you know, since it's a vehicle, gives the feel of that desert tan camouflage that the army tanks use. So it looks more professional especially with the fenders too I'm satisfied all right clear streets ahead I definitely owed some decent in action footage so I got my new GoPro set up let's go